Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So let me ask you a question. Should you design your system or application for failure or implement automation or maybe scalability or high availability? Well, all these concepts are very close to each other and all these concepts today we are going to discuss in this video. We will take some important questions on all these concepts and I will explain all these concepts to you in a very easy to understand language. And of course, in the process, we will prepare for the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam. And yes, my friends, let me tell you one thing. This video is going to be super interesting for you because from this video, I'm changing the approach of the videos. And my plan is not just to show you the AWS official documentation. Of course, that will be there. I will showcase all the AWS documentation related to each of the question. But the new thing is that with each question, I will try to explain each of these concepts, each of the answer in my own words in a very simplified language so that all of you can understand. And additionally, I will also give you some analogies and examples that will make all the cloud concepts super easy for you. And what it will do is it will really enable you even if the questions in the real exam are changed or tweaked a little you will be able to handle them and of course you will be able to actually work on the AWS cloud. So let's begin the part 31 with question number 231. The question is saying that which of the cloud architecture design concept is supported by distributing workloads across various availability zones. Now what are the options given here? Option A implement automation, option B design for agility, Option C, design for failure and option D, implement elasticity. The correct answer for the same is option C, design for failure. Now friends, let me explain you in detail what exactly is design for failure and then I will also explain all of the options given. So friends, design for failure is basically a fundamental principle in the cloud architecture that really emphasizes building systems with the expectations that the component will inevitably fail. What that simply means is that we all know that in any applications, the components always fail. So rather than striving for perfection, the focus is on creating the applications or the systems that can gracefully handle these failures without causing significant disruption to the overall operation. And the key idea behind the design for failure is that we anticipate the failure, we build the redundancy in the application, and then we implement the fault tolerance, we test the failure scenarios, and finally, we make our application, we code our application or the system in such a way that it can handle the failure in a graceful way. And what are the benefits for design for failure? Well, you have increased reliability, you have improved availability, faster recovery and enhanced user experience. Now, let me give you an example so that you can really visualize the concept and understand it better. So imagine that you have an online shopping website. Now you have to design for failure and what exactly that will involve? Well, having multiple servers distributing across different regions, that could be one thing. Secondly, you can also think of load balancer to distribute the traffic across the servers. Then you implement automatic failovers to backup servers if the primary server fail. And also my friends, of course, you can store the critical data in multiple data centers and then finally use the caching to reduce the load on the databases and improve response time. So I hope my friends, you like the new approach where I'm describing all the concepts in much more detail in my own words. And of course, you can always find the documentation links in the description box. Now, let me very quickly explain the other concepts as well. So implement auto Automation, well, implement automation can help you manage resources across multiple availability zone and it is not the core benefit of distribution strategy. Then coming to the design for agility, well, the distributing workloads can improve agility in some scenarios, but this also is not the primary focus for distributing workloads across various availability zone. Now coming to implement elasticity, well, elasticity refers to the ability of the application to scale up and down, scale up and down the resources very quickly according to the demand. So I hope you understood well enough all the four options given here and why we picked the design for failure as the correct answer. And yes, I want to remind you in case you're looking forward for the other certifications, for example, Azure certifications, AZ900, DP900, AI900, AZ104, DP203, that we have the Q&A series for all these exams. And yes, 
all these series all these videos are absolutely free so go ahead and check them out and prepare for the certifications and also in addition to the videos you can also avail the q a pdf files in case you want that please do email me at connectors at the rate the tech blackboard.com now let's move on to the next question question number 232 it says which cloud architecture design principle ensures that a system remains functional even if the individual component fail what are the options given option a scalability option b high availability option c elasticity and option d fault tolerance and the correct answer for the same is option d fault tolerance so what exactly is fault tolerance well you can read it here on the aws documentation that think of the fault tolerance as a big brother of high availability and fault tolerance means that the system will almost always maintain a time and the users will not notice any differences during a primary system outage okay so once again let me explain fault tolerance in my own words so friends fault tolerance in the cloud computing is the ability of the system to continue to operate without interruption even if one or more components fail and this is a very critical ability to ensure reliability and availability of the cloud-based application and the services and what are the few benefits of fault tolerance in cloud computing firstly we have increased reliability secondly improved performance thirdly enhanced data protection and last but not the least and probably the biggest one is business continuity and also my friends i really encourage you to understand what exactly is high availability because both of these concepts are very related so on the same documentation if you go top here you will understand what exactly is high availability and there is a very good example given here you will come to this example here and they have explained in a very nice way what exactly is high availability taking the mobile backing application so the links are always in the description box please check that out and with that let's move on to the next question question number 233 that says which cloud architecture design principle allows for the efficient use of resources by adjusting resource allocation based on the workload demands your options are scalability option b high availability option c elasticity and lastly option d fault tolerance and the correct answer for this question is option c elasticity and friends i hope that you're noticing the way i have designed these questions the way i have placed these questions this pattern of the question is intentionally designed so that you can understand all the related concept in one single video okay so now you can understand what exactly is elasticity on this aws official documentation so first of all you can read that the ability to acquire resources as you need them and release resources when you no longer need them that exactly is elasticity so basically elasticity in aws or for that matter in any other cloud refers to the ability to rapidly scale the cloud computing resources up and down based on the demand and this means that you can quickly increase or decrease amount of computing power storage or network capacity as you need them now you may be thinking what are the key characteristics of elasticity in aws well first of all we have auto scaling then we have rapid provisioning then we also have cost efficiency now friends can you give me some examples of aws services that you can really associate elasticity with well let me give you three examples and then you can let me know what can be the other examples in the comment section so firstly we have amazon ec2 secondly amazon s3 which is a storage service and third one i will give you is aws lambda and i want you to think a little bit more and give me more examples in the comment section and this is the sure shot way where we can learn from each other okay so now let's move on to the next question question number 234 that says which cloud architecture design principle focuses on minimizing data transfers and the latency by storing data closer to the users your options are option a scalability option b high availability option c edge computing and option d security and the correct answer for this question is option c edge computing so let me explain edge computing in a little bit more detail so edge computing is a cloud architecture design principle that really involves processing and data closer to the user so i'm sure that you must have heard about the caching so as i was saying storing the data closer to the user at the network edge rather than the centralized data center so what happens is that by placing the resources closer to the user such as computing power or storage this really reduces the data transfer and the latency and what are the benefits well this enables faster response time better user experience and efficient utilization of network bandwidth and with that let's move on to the next question question number 235 that says 
which AWS service will help protect applications running on the AWS from DDoS attacks. Very important concept, DDoS attacks. Options given are Amazon Guard Duty, Option B, AWS WAF, Option C, AWS Shield, and Option D, Amazon Inspector. And the correct answer for the same is, could you guess the answer? Well, it is Option C, AWS Shield. And just to remind you, please check out question number 230 of the previous part, part 30, where I really explain in quite some detail what exactly is AWS Shield. But nonetheless, I will not leave you without the documentation. So here you can read about the AWS Shield, which really helps your application to maximize availability and responsiveness with the managed DDoS protection. And here you can really understand how exactly this works. So basically, Amazon Shield is a managed DDoS protection service that protects your application running on AWS platform. And this service, my friends, it really protects your application against a wide range of distributed denial of service. And to better understand AWS Shield, you need to understand what exactly is DDoS. So what happens is that the attackers, they really overwhelm your application or your resources with unwanted traffic. And when that happens with the overload of traffic, your servers, your application, they really breaks down. And of course, that implies that the AWS Shield provides you a protection against the DDoS attacks. So friends, I hope you liked the questions for today and make sure to watch all the previous parts in this series so that you are covering the entire syllabus for the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam. And do not forget, there is loads of important documentation and important link for the AWS documentation that will help you prepare. And as always, everything is free. So please go ahead and make the best out of it. And lastly, in case you love the content, please subscribe to the channel and like the video share the videos on your social media platform and that's all for today i will see you in the next video till then stay fit keep learning and thanks for watching